Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be messing with this big old cast iron Dutch oven. Now this one was given to me by a friend and it needs to be reseasoned pretty bad. In fact, you may actually want to use the term uh, restored on this one. As you see, it's Lodge brand. You might be able to read that. And it's got some pretty bad corrosion on it. Not the worst that I've seen. It's a lot worse on the inside here. Got a lot of rust there. But uh, restoring and reseasoning cast iron, like any traditional skill, uh, kind of like the my hide tanning video, I said that about that, and I'll say it about this too. There's no end to the amount of methods there are to do that, and uh, pretty much none of them are wrong, right? It's a very simple concept. Take the corrosion off, and then put an oil finish on the cast iron. That keeps it from corroding further and keeps your food from sticking on the inside of it. So, none of the methods are particularly wrong. Some may be easier than others, but uh, yeah, pretty much no matter which way you go about it, as long as you take off that corrosion and give it a good oil finish, you're going to be okay. So, I think to start out with here, I'm going to use a traditional tool of my native people and uh, that is going to be the, the power drill with one of these wire brushes on here and I'm going to start on the inside of this thing and try to work on some of this heavier uh, rust and see what kind of pitting I'm dealing with. Stay tuned. Alright, so we're just going to start out with this and see what we're dealing with here. Alright, so after using the wire wheel, this is what we got. Still looks kind of bad, but not nearly as bad as what it was. Um, we got the big flakes of rust out anyway. I don't see any real major pitting, so that is probably going to be the most aggressive thing that we have to do to this. Now, I think what I'm going to do next, because we've still got a lot of like animal hair and um, you know just a lot of crud down in here, I think I'm going to hose this off and try to get all the debris and everything out of it and then we'll move it over to the sink alright so we've hosed this out and it's looking a lot better now what we're gonna do is use this Brillo pad and make an abrasive slurry with just some regular salt And we're going to scrub all the rest of the corrosion out of here. Now you'd be surprised just how aggressive a Brillo pad and salt and a little bit of water is going to actually be. Now a lot of elbow grease and doing this is probably going to get us just about where we need to be. Now you might be thinking, you know, once you wipe all this off and everything, well salt and water is corrosive to metal, particularly cast iron, and you're absolutely right. So what we're going to do to keep it from flash rusting is we're going to use some vegetable oil and wipe it down with that. Now I've already done that with the lid, and this is where we're at right here. So you see, this is looking really good, and that's all it is. It hasn't been baked on or anything yet, just wiped down with oil. So hopefully this is going to look like that does whenever we get done, and then we'll be ready to throw it in the oven. Okay, so we're making some progress here, uh, but I ran into a little bit of a problem. And that is, you can see where that rust used to be. Well, now that I'm down to bare metal, or close to it, I can see that it is actually pitted a little bit more than I thought it was. So, rather than have this always be kind of rough right here, and always more difficult to clean, I think I'm going to take a few extra steps here, and I'm going to try to sand this out. I'm going to use my orbital sander for that, just to try to smooth this out a little bit and try to get it even. Uh, it doesn't have to be you know, smooth like glass or anything, it just has to be even. Oh yeah, that evened it right out. So it kind of goes without saying that if you have some real valuable or rare a really memorable cast iron, don't do that. <laughs> don't use an orbital sander on it. Try to stay away from the power tools. Just stick with elbow grease and something like this. All right, the salt and the Brillo pad. 
Because like I said, you would be amazed at just how aggressive this actually is and how well it works. So I'm just about done here. I'm going to hit up the outside of this a little bit more and I think that'll about do it. Yeah, just this regular old lodge stuff. All I'm concerned about is the end result. And I think the end result's going to be pretty good with this. So here it is, looking good. Yeah, yeah, it looks real good. Take a look at the inside. There you go. Just about perfect. Now this is almost down to bare metal, but if you don't get it down exactly to bare metal, don't worry about that. You may even still see some color in there, a little bit of that rust brown or rust red color, and that's okay too. You see, it's kind of a common misconception that seasoning uh, any kind of cast iron is going to be some sort of a, well, a permanent finish on this, and it's not. It's going to be a lot more dynamic than that. See, as long as you use this and you don't abuse it or neglect it or anything, you're not going to have to be nearly as aggressive uh, as we have been with this uh, anymore, but you are going to be cleaning it. Now, after you cook with it, you're going to take it out, you're going to wash it down, and you're going to be wiping fresh oil on here, and that's going to be a new fresh coat of oil, and that's going to keep on seasoning this, but it's going to be cleaning it as you're seasoning too. So the more you use it, the better it's going to be, the cleaner it's going to be. So this is all oiled up now with that vegetable oil. You can use just about any type of oil. A lot of people use vegetable shortening. In fact, I bought this because originally I was going to use that on here, but... I think I'm just going to stick with the vegetable oil because it's working really well. Now it's ready for the oven and as you see I've got my oven here and it is preheated to 350 degrees. And if we look down I've got some tin foil on the bottom rack there to catch any drippings. Of course just using a regular vegetable oil we're not going to have too much dripping down. If you use shortening or lard or something like that you're going to have a lot more dripping down on the bottom. So we're going to throw our cast iron in here. We're going to put it in upside down with the lid on the side. That way everything can drip and drain out of it if it needs to. And we're going to leave it in here for an hour. And we're going to take it out, slap some fresh oil on it, and do it again. And we're going to keep doing that until it is seasoned and ready to cook. Alright, so there it is. And now we wait. Yeah, yeah, this stuff's looking real good. Alright. Alright, so we got it in the oven again for round two. And one thing I thought I should mention is that you probably shouldn't use paper towels whenever you oil or clean your cast iron. You should use a washcloth, something like this. Not this particular one because this one is leaving behind some dust and uh, lint and some other things too. I don't know why it's clean, but that's okay. I can clean that out later. Like I think I mentioned before, one of the best things that you can do for seasoning your cast iron is just to get it out and use it because after you cook with it, you're going to clean it, you're going to wipe it down with some fresh oil before you put it away, and that's going to continue to season your cookware. So this one's just about ready to cook with. I'm going to ensure that by running it through probably two more times, uh, but probably the best policy is to just continue to season it as you use it. Now if you're worried about it, and you think you might have a nasty time cleaning up because there's going to be food stuck to the inside of this thing, they do make Dutch oven liners that you can use, or you can line it with tin foil, depending on what you're making. So, it's just something to keep in mind, and I think in probably two or three more hours, this thing's going to be ready to go. Alright, so here it is after round two. Yeah, 
Everything is looking real good. Alright, so after two times of this being in the oven, I think it's ready to cook with. I mean, it looks good to me. So, we're going to make some chicken pot pie and put in here, and we'll see how it turns out. So this is obviously made from scratch. <laughs> is it ready? Yes. We're ready to go in the oven. Now we wait. Yep. Alright, here's the finished product. Looks good enough to eat. Alright, so if y'all want the recipe, we'll put it in the description below. Yeah, that's right, we got Pizza Hut plates. On China. <laughs> Alright guys, so just to finish up real quick, uh, I had the cast iron all cleaned up and everything, nothing stuck to it except for maybe just a little tiny ring, maybe an eighth of an inch, just around where the top of that pot pie was. And all it took was one of these Lodge brand uh, brushes here and some hot water and it took care of that right away. So our Dutch oven was seasoned perfectly and all I had to do after that was just wipe it down with some fresh oil and it's ready to go. So. One thing that I want to really impress upon you guys, if you don't take anything else away from this, because I know there's countless cast iron videos on YouTube, is don't worry so much about color. And I mentioned before, if you have just a little bit of a hint of oxidation, some rust color on there, that's okay. That you can take care of over time, particularly if it's on the outside of your cookware. Just by rubbing it with a rag and some fresh oil as you're using it will eventually get rid of that. And whenever you're seasoning, don't think that it's got to be completely black before that it's seasoned. Um, you kind of saw like in the bottom of our Dutch oven there, it was still kind of a bronzy color and that's because I took it down to bare metal. If you think about it, that bare metal is sort of a gunmetal gray color and then the oil that you put on there is maybe a translucent yellowish color in, in our case with the vegetable oil. It could be white if you're using some type of like vegetable shortening. It could be clear depending on what type of oil you use but the two of those together probably isn't going to equal black right away. That doesn't mean that it's not seasoned. Uh, it could be seasoned perfectly. Uh, but that black color just comes with time. And it's a type of patina that you can't really rush. Sometimes it'll turn black right away. Sometimes it'll take a little while. But anyways, that doesn't mean that it isn't seasoned. It doesn't mean that it isn't ready to go. As you guys saw here, we only put it through the oven twice. And it was great, ready to go. Alright guys, so that's all the time that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, thumbs up.